Do you want to know how to invest like a legend? Do you want to know the secrets of finding and acting on rare opportunities that can make you rich and successful? If you do, then you need to watch this video, where we will discover the wisdom and insights of Charlie Munger, one of the greatest investors of all time. Value investment in the sense the Mungers would have twice the assets they now have. Charlie Munger was born on January 1, 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska to Florence 2D Russell and Alfred Cassie Munger, a lawyer. He had three siblings, Carol, Mary, and Ogden Jr. He worked at Buffett & Son, a grocery store owned by Warren Buffett's grandfather Ernest P. Buffett, as a teenager. He also developed an interest in card playing and mathematics during his time in college. In early 1943, he dropped out of college to serve in the U.S. Army Air Corps as a second lieutenant. He studied meteorology at Caltech in Pasadena, California, where he met his future wife, Nancy Barry Borthwick. He married her in 1956, and they had seven children, Barry A., Charles T., Emily M., Molly M., Philip R., Wendy M., and Thomas C. After the World War II ended in 1945, he enrolled at Harvard Law School with the help of Roscoe Pound, a former dean of Harvard Law and a Munger family friend. He graduated magna cum laude with a JD in 1948. He then joined his father's law firm in Omaha for two years before moving to California to start his law practice. In 1959, he met Warren Buffett at a dinner party hosted by Peter Lynch. They became friends and business partners over the year. Munger joined Berkshire Hathaway as its vice chairman in 1965 after Buffett bought out his father's law firm. He also became chairman of Wesco Financial Corporation from 1984 and 2011 and the chairman of the Daily Journal Corporation from 1986 to the present. As vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Munger played an important role in advising Buffett on various aspects of investing and business management. He also helped Berkshire acquire or invest in many companies such as Coca-Cola, American Express, Apple Computer, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Kraft Foods Group Incorporation, Chevron Corporation, and many others. He was known for his analytical skills, his intellectual curiosity, and his philosophical views on life. He designed several student housing projects for universities such as Stanford University, the University of California, Berkeley, the University of Texas, Austin, and the University of Michigan. He believed that architecture should reflect the culture and value of the people who live there. Munger also had a generous spirit. When it comes to philanthropy, he donated millions of dollars to various causes such as education, healthcare, environmental protection, animal welfare, and arts. He supported organizations such as the Giving Pledge Foundation, a campaign initiated by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett to encourage billionaires to donate most of their wealth to charity, the Aspen Institute, a nonpartisan think tank that promotes leadership development, the Hoover Institution, a public policy research center at Stanford University, the Charles Koch Foundation, a private foundation that supports research on various topics such as energy policy, Charles R. Schwab Foundation, a private foundation that supports education initiatives, Munger died in November 28, 2023, at age of 99, after suffering from Alzheimer's disease for several years. His death was mourned by many people who admired him for its wisdom, integrity, generosity, and friendship with Buffett. His legacy will live on through his book, such as The Poor Charlie's Almanac, his speeches, such as the essay of Warren Buffett, his interviews, such as The Charlie's Rose Show, and his investments, such as The Berkshire Hathaway. Munger shared some of his life lessons and advice on how to achieve success and happiness. He talked about his regret, mistakes, failures, and successes. He also talked about his view in China, technology, education, healthcare, and the future. How often do you come across the good opportunities in your life? Maybe it is a chance to learn a new skill, start a new project, or meet a new person. Do you think these opportunities are abundant or scarce? If you are like most people, you might think that there are plenty of opportunities out there, and you just have to find them. But Munger would disagree. He would say that good opportunities are few and infrequent. He would say that life is not just bathing you with unlimited opportunities. He would say that most of the ideas that you encounter are either bad or mediocre, and you have to eliminate them first. How do you eliminate bad and mediocre ideas? Well, Munger had a very rigorous process of analysis and evaluation. He would study the facts, the logics, the risks, and the reward of each idea. He would compare them with other ideas and see which ones had the most potential. He would also use mental models, which are frameworks of thinking that help you understand the world better. He would use these models to avoid common biases and errors in judgment. By doing this, Munger was able to filter out the noise and focus on the signal. He was able to find the rare opportunities that were worth pursuing. He was able to find the needles in a haystack. But finding rare opportunities is not enough. You have to recognize them when they come. You have to be able to see the value and the potential of each opportunity. You have to be able to see the big picture in the long term. This is not easy because sometimes rare opportunities are disguised as problems or challenges. Sometimes they are unpopular or controversial. Sometimes they are hidden or overlooked. Sometimes they are risky or uncertain. Munger advised investors to be patient and disciplined and not to chase after every trend or fad. 
He advised them to wait for the right opportunities, to not settle for the average or the mediocre. He advised them to find places where it is safe and wise not to diversify. Investing in high quality businesses means buying shares of companies that have durable competitive advantages, a strong moat, a loyal customer base, a high return on capital, and trustworthy management. These are the characteristics that make a business profitable, resilient, and sustainable in the long run. Munger believed that these businesses are worth more than their market value because they can generate consistent cash flows and earning growth over time. Munger eschewed diversification. He was comfortable holding as few as three securities at a time. He preferred to invest in businesses that he understood well rather than spreading his money across many low-quality ones that he knew little about. He said that he did not want to be exposed to the rest of different industries or markets. He said that he wanted to focus on the best businesses in the world. Munger also said that he preferred to invest in businesses that he could hold for a long time and not worry about the short-term fluctuations of the market. He said that he did not want to chase after every trend and fad. He said that they wanted to avoid buying stocks when they were overpriced or selling stocks when they are undervalued. He said that they wanted to buy stocks when they are cheap and sell stocks when they are expensive. However, finding and recognizing rare opportunities is still not enough. You also have to act on them when they come. You have to be able to seize the moment and take advantage of the opportunities. You have to be willing to take calculated risks and overcome your fear and doubt. Munger said that you have to learn how to recognize rare opportunities when they come. He said that this is not easy because sometimes rare opportunities are disguised as problems or challenges. Sometimes they are unpopular or controversial. Sometimes they are hidden or overlooked. Sometimes they are risky or uncertain. Munger advised investors to be patient and disciplined not to chase after every trend or fad. He advised them to wait for the right opportunities and not to sell for the average or mediocre. He advised them to find places where it is safe and wise not to diversify. What does that mean? It means that Munger preferred to invest in a few high-quality businesses that he understood very well than spreading his money across many low-quality ones that he knew little about. It means that he preferred to invest in businesses that had a durable competitive advantage, a strong moat, a loyal customer base, a high return on capital, and trustworthy management. It means that he preferred to invest in businesses that he could hold on for a long time and not worry about the short-term fluctuations of the market. However, finding and recognizing rare opportunities is still not enough. You have to act on them when they come. You have to be able to seize the moment and take advantage of the opportunities. You have to be willing to take calculated risks and overcome your fears and doubts. You have to be flexible and adaptable, but also stick to your principles and values. This is also not easy because sometimes acting on rare opportunities require courage and conviction. Sometimes it requires going against the crowd or conventional wisdom. Sometimes it requires making hard decisions or sacrifices. Sometimes it requires facing failures or setbacks. Munger said that you have to learn how to recognize rare opportunities when they come. He said that this is the whole secret of investment in life. He said that this is how you achieve excellence and greatness. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think of Charlie Munger and his investment philosophy. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.